Thank you, Will. Now we're going to switch over to another First Amendment issue relating to the prohibition of interfering with hunters who are on your property under hunter harassment law. Anthony Marr has a degree and is the author of Omniscience and the Human Destiny and Homo Sapiens Save Your Earth. He is a wildlife preservationist since 1995, and he has worked in India and was awarded the title of Champion of the Bengal Tiger in the TV documentary series Champions of the Wild, aired on Animal Planet and Discovery Channel in 20 countries. Having been, on the front, having been a frontline anti-hunter since 1995, he plans to launch legal challenges against state hunter harassment laws for violating the Constitution. Welcome, Anthony Marr. We live in a supposedly democratic country, however, it is, where hunting is concerned, it is uh, the minority ruling the, over the majority. The percentage of hunters in this country is approximately 5% of the population. In the state of New Jersey, it's less than 1%. However, in New Jersey, the state constitution clearly states that of the 11 voting members of the Fish and Game Commission, at least six must be hunters. Some kind of democracy. And Canada is about to follow the U.S every step the U.S. takes, so um, I'm scared for my country as well. Uh, when I was in, uh, uh, in New Jersey in my tours, um, Angie Mettler, uh, the, currently the uh, president of the New Jersey Animal Rights Coalition uh, or Alliance, she was found guilty of hunter harassment by going up to speak to hunters. And uh, she has been, since then, labeled as a domestic terrorist and she is as peaceful a person as anybody else in this room. And it, it is, and justice is totally miscarried in these cases. However, tonight I'm treating the case of Jan Hagenson, and I would like you to just imagine this happening to you. You've been living in a farm in Pennsylvania, in Western Pennsylvania, for 30 years. Over the 30 years, you've had no hunting signs in your property, your property is fenced, your hunting, no hunting signs have repeatedly been torn down. Your fence have repeatedly been damaged. Hunters have repeatedly violated your property. You have asked them to leave and they won't. Bullets have flown right through your property in a hor horizontal trajectory and hit a house in a neighboring property and penetrating three walls on that house. And uh, her barn and her farmhouse have been arsoned and destroyed. Repeatedly, she has reported these cases to police and nothing has been done for 20 years. And finally, after 20 years, she did it more severely. There was a bunch of hunters in the back woods, in the back part of the property, and she f went up there, unarmed, single female person, to ask them to leave. They won't. She said, if you don't leave, I'm going to call police. They won't. She called police from her property. The police came did not take a statement from her. The police took st statements from the hunters. And, uh, and then later, a few days later, she found hunters shooting from the road, which is totally illegal. Even hunters uh, don't uh, go for that. She also told these hunters not to do that. And one of the hunters, with a loaded rifle in his arm, walked up to her car and threatened to shoot her and her mother on the spot. And she says, you can't do that. It's against the law. He says, I know where you live. I'm going to come tonight and get you. She called the police on the spot. Police took half an hour to come. And uh, once again, did not take a statement from her, took the statements from the hunters. Within several days, she received five citations for nine counts of violation of the hunter harassment statute of Pennsylvania. After a prolonged series of trials lasting for three or four years, she was found guilty of all nine counts, including two counts of felony. She, unfortunately, they picked on the wrong person because Jan Hagenson happens to be an attorney at law. <laughs> she took this to an appellate court and fought this case. The appellate court could follow two, two uh, causes. One is to prove that there was no evidence to support 
that she was guilty of any of these hunter harassment acts. And uh, secondly, they could overturn the hunter harassment laws on its face in Pennsylvania. And they didn't even have to go to second round. They have found absolutely no evidence against her in even in the execution of the Hunter Harassment Act of Pennsylvania itself. So she did not get that satisfaction of getting the Hunter Harassment Act overturned in Pennsylvania. So she <laughs> So now she's taking aggressive action against them. She's no longer a defendant, she's a plaintiff, and the hunters and the policemen and one game warden, which didn't do anything either, they became they have become the defendants. And <laughs> I'm going to tell Jan that, you, that, that she got at least three ovations. <laughs> and keep it coming. <laughs> the, uh, so this time she's, she's really going after the Hunter Harassment Act of Pennsylvania. And uh, she, so she's appealing, not appealing, she's launched an aggressive suit in federal court now on the third level and if she loses, she's going to go all the way to the top. And that's going to take her two years to, to do if she has to do that. So the Hunter Harassment Act, once again, as, as Will pointed out, is overbroad and vague. The term harassment contains things like physical interference and blocking hunters and standing in the line of fire, etc. And also harassment, and the, and the term harassment has never been defined. And as proven in her case, the term harassment means that talking to hunters is a federal, is a uh, terrorism act. And so um, what I'm here to urge you to do is to support Jan Hagensen. Her last name is spelled as H-A-A-G-E-N-S-E-N. -E -E and uh, she's one single person fighting this uh, big legal action. She is the spearhead of our government to purify our laws in line with reason and in line of compassion and in line of justice. There are three benefits to support Jan uh, Hagenson. Number one is the success in Pennsylvania will open the doors to the challenges of the Hunter Harassment Acts of other states, which I intend to do. But as a Canadian, I cannot do that legally, so other US uh, organizations are stepping up to the plate, including the In Defense of Animals, and I believe farm. So uh, this is going to be a class lawsuit to challenge this reconsidered to be a branch of the, of the Animal Terrorism Act. And um, the second benefit would be uh, if we can undermine the Hunter Harassment Act, we will undermine the Animal, Te Animal Enterprises Terrorism Act. And th If we can support her to win this case, she promises me to serve as our pro bono lawyer. So let's do that. <laughs> so tomorrow night during the um, awards dinner, we would like to raise enough funds for Jan Hagenson to keep going. She has exhausted her funds. But tomorrow, if I get a chance to speak for her, I will tell you exactly how much money she has already lost how much civil liberty she has already lost, and how much she needs in her future course of action. So please pay attention to that and be generous to her. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anthony. And the fundraiser for Jan Hagenson tomorrow is really basically to allow her to put food on the table and to keep going personally because this is all at her personal expense. Con Congressional Representative Dennis Kucinich of Ohio has been the great defender of animal rights and was the lone dissenter of the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act on the House floor before it was passed by a voice vote. We are now going to, we are now going to hear from Dennis Kucinich.